Okay, so after you set up your house's theme and installed the recommended plugins that they, they want you to install to make the, um, the theme work properly, this is what you end up with. You can see here that it's added some new menu items, quite a few, and that's how the program runs. If we go to take a look at the program, to actually look at the website, the way it sits from very, the very first start, we can see that it's a plain Jane site. There's not much here. There's, there's certainly no demo pictures and a beautiful, really cool looking website. We don't really want to do that because if we put in all those demo pictures and load up all that demo information, we're going to have to come back and clean it all up. And it's a lot of work to clean up the information once you put it in there. So while the site is kind of bland right now, we're going to spice it up fast enough. Follow along with me in these tutorials and we're going to go through step by step on how to get this site up and running so everybody's happy. Let's go back to the dashboard. And from the dashboard, we have the theme options at the top. And we also, if we were to navigate down to the bottom, there's another button down here. They don't want you to miss it. Make sure you can find it. So if we go to the theme options, and we're just going to click this, and it brings us to the theme configuration section. I say section because all, all of these are options that uh, we either want to double check or we want to set up and change. In this general section, this is the one we're on now, we're general, then we have logos, and we have the top menu bar, and then we have the login, splash screen, and you could read just as well as I can. Going back to the general, back to the first one. We're going to make sure that the country is whatever country you're in. The language for the date picker, I leave it alone. Most of this stuff I just leave alone. There's only one or two little things that I kind of don't like. That is, I don't want a video to start when the page loads. So I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to disable that. Then, when it says here, there's some image overlays. There's a dark gradient so you can't see the pictures for some reason. I don't know why, but I'm going to turn that off. Remove that. You can play with that. You can turn that on and off and see if you like it or not. But those are the two that I like to have. We're going to save that. Now, when we go down to the logos, this section here, you've got to create your logo either to these dimensions or close to these dimensions. The Retina logo is twice the size. See that 2x is twice the size of the original logo. And that's because the resolution of a retina screen is so good that it needs to have a very, very crisp image. I also want you to know that you can't really see the logos here because you see it's white up here. It's white logo on a black background. That's what we're seeing here. It's a white logo on a white background, so it's a little hard to see. But I, when you do try to work on your logos, you should really make a logo that looks good on black and a logo that looks good on white. And here they've named it accordingly. Logo houses white. Logo houses white at two times the resolution. Okay, two times the size because it's retina. Now, once you make these, I would say that as you scroll down here, you can see that a standard logo height is 24 and the length is 140 pixels. It, try to stay within that, that image there, those, 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 those parameters, because everything is relying on your menu items up at the top, where your logo is situated, and if you try to put in a big logo, it's going to push everything down and, and, and kind of make it cluttered. So just try to stay with these. You don't have to, but it's good to try to stay around these sizes. Now this favcon, that is that little image up at the top when you have a browser open and there's a tab open, there's a little image there. You can see 
that that um, YouTube makes a little red button with a, a, a white arrow in the middle there. See it? That's their logo or their little favcon for their page. Houses has this little blue target type thing here. And that's what's set up down here. If you change these, okay, and make them a different size you're gonna to have to find a program that allows you to do that and go ahead you can change all these up again um, I don't mind these right now they don't seem to bother me it's one of the least things on my list to have done the most important thing to have done is to have a dark and a light logo the logos that work both on dark pages and light pages have that done and then go ahead and upload your logo so at this point we're gonna just pause a minute and I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna stop the video right here and try to make each one of these videos between I don't know five and eight minutes or something in there and we're gonna run down each one of these and then later on we'll decide which ones didn't really need anything so you can kind of skip those over and you can come back and view those later if you want so so far we did the little general guy which is uh, we really didn't do that but the important thing now is that you have to make a logo. You need to actually have a logo in your hand that you can manipulate to make this all work on your page. So stay tuned for the next lesson.